first of all, we'll have a quick look at the window that comes up when the chart plotter is loaded. You'll see that it's split into two areas. On the right hand side, we have the chart window and on the left hand side, we have a panel that's split into a number of areas. At the top, there's an information panel that's used in conjunction with the simulator. And below that, we have a number of control buttons that we'll be using quite regularly with our chart work. We'll now have a look at the chart window in a little bit more detail. To zoom in on a chart area, use the zoom control panel down here. Simply click on whichever one of the bars is appropriate. Alternatively, you can use the one-to-one -one zoom here. Finally, we can simply use our mouse to drag an area of the chart that we want to highlight and releasing it. We move around the chart using these buttons which are all around the screen. Changing charts is very easy. There's a chart button in the control panel. Clicking it brings up a sub-menu. We want to select and we have a choice of the charts that are available. Choosing our Y chart 4 will just bring that up and we can zoom in and move around as before. We'll now look at how to measure distance and direction on the chart. We do that by using the measuring tools button here. Clicking brings up a sub-menu which is two options, fixed and multi. Fixed measures the distance and direction between two points. Multi measures the distance and direction between a series of points. We'll have a quick look at both of those. Fixed first of all, click on that and then move our mouse across to the first of the points. We'll choose the Namley Bar Beacon here. So put our mouse over that and click. Then we just move our mouse to the target point, which will be the isolated danger mark on Black Shoal. Again, move our mouse over that and click again. And here we have the information the distance between the two points is 4.24 nautical miles. The direction from Namely Bar Beacon to Black Shoal is 219 degrees true. And we've got the reciprocal bearing, which is from Black Shoal isolated danger mark to the Namely Bar Beacon, which is 039 degrees true. We'll now have a look at the multi-point measuring tool. I want to measure the distance here between Key Marina down here in Port Rampton and Endel Marina on North Douglas Island using the shortest safe route. So to do that I select the measuring tools and this time I'm clicking on multi. I move my mouse over to the start point and click point number one. I'm then looking for the next safe point let's say somewhere around about this green boy and I click again. I move my cursor up to the third point. We'll stay in reasonably deep water and as I go around I'm just clicking at each of the major turning points until we get into Endel Marina which is a double click to let the chart plotter know that you've finished. The final window shows us the total distance, which is 11.47 nautical miles. But the direction that it shows is from the last point, 152 degrees true. And similarly, each of the preceding windows shows the cumulative distance travelled to that point and the direction from the previous point. So that's the multi-point measuring tool. To clear any lines on the chart, as long as the measuring tool 
button has been highlighted, our menu, submenu will still be there. We just click clear and we have the choice of getting rid of everything, clear all, or just the last plot that we did. It's worthwhile noting that if you click clear last, it will clear the last set of points, whether that be a fixed or a multi-point plot. So here we'll get rid of everything that we've done. Using the measuring tool to put in a three-point fix is fairly straightforward. Here we have our three observations and going to the chart we need to select the measuring tool and it's a fixed bearing line that we wanted to do. Our first bearing was from the observation tower on West Point so we simply move our mouse on top of that, click and move our measuring tool out of the way. Now the bearing that we're looking for is 319 degrees true from the point that we are at to the observation tower. So it's important to remember that that bearing is shown in our little information box as the reciprocal bearing. The main bearing is the bearing from the observation tower to our vessel. So we line it up 319 degrees true and click. We're now putting in another position line so we click our fixed again and move to our second observed point which was the south cardinal mark off east point. Again we click and then move our mouse until the bearing in the box matches our observed bearing which was 086 degrees true. So I need to come down a little bit here there we go and I click. So that's two of our three points going to fixed again and our final observed point across a little bit was here on the tower and turn island mouse over click and then drag and the bearing I'm looking for here is 0 to 3 degrees. 0 to 3 degrees is there and I click to complete our three point fix. Once we have our three point fix if we want to take a note of the latitude and longitude we need to look down in this box on the left hand side which shows us the position of the cursor. So we move our mouse back across to the intersection of our three points and if we look at the box on the bottom left hand corner we can note the latitude and longitude of our position. Using the electronic chart plotter to put on waypoints is very straightforward. We use the waypoint button here, click it brings up a sub menu to put in a new waypoint, add a waypoint and we have a choice of either using a list or using the chart. Let's do both. We'll start with charts, so we just click and then move our mouse across to wherever it is we want the waypoint to be. Once the mouse is in position, we simply click and we can rename it if we want. Happy with that? Click OK. And then we can go on and insert a number of waypoints as if we're perhaps planning a route. We'll do two. Now, we'll move on to adding one by list. So, add waypoint to list. And we'll see that the first two waypoints that we put in are already up there. We want to add and a little information box comes in. Waypoint 3, I'm happy with that. Moving down to the latitude and we simply key in the latitude of the waypoint that we want. So 45 degrees in this case, 50 minutes north is fine. And 006 degrees, 00 west. It's important to make sure that you have your north and south and east and west correct. And then simply click OK and the new waypoint 
is there. OK takes away that box. And now we can see on our chart our three waypoints. We can use the submenu buttons to show what is displayed on the chart. The display button gives us the choice of displaying nothing, the number or the name. So if we click on waypoints, they'll disappear. Click again and they're back. Editing a waypoint is very straightforward too. Press the edit button and we can choose whether we want to edit from a list or from the chart. From the chart we simply click on the waypoint we want and then we have the opportunity to either edit it, move it or delete the waypoint. We'll move this one. Are you sure? Yes we are sure so we just click on that and then move the waypoint to the new position and click OK. The other way of editing is from a list so if we press the edit button and select list we can then look at the three waypoints and make any changes that we want. We'll clear these waypoints off the chart by deleting them and accepting. Looking at a practical use for waypoints, then let's assume that we're on passage from Stevenstown to Port Fraser and to help navigation we put in a waypoint at 46 degrees 20 minutes north and 6 degrees west. During the passage we notice that our GPS tells us that the distance to the waypoint is two and a half miles and our bearing to the waypoint is 138 degrees true. So we want to plot our position and note down the latitude and the longitude. So the first thing that we have to do is put in our waypoint. So we select the waypoint tool, add waypoint to the list and we click add. Waypoint 1 is fine and we just key in our details there. Zero, zero, 006 and remembering that we have to change that east to west by pressing the W. Click OK to accept that and we can see our waypoint has appeared on the chart. Now to plot our position we need to use the measuring tool. So we simply click on that. It's a fixed line that we want because we want to measure from the waypoint. We put our cursor over it and click to our vessel. Now we know that it's 138 degrees true and that is to the waypoint from our vessel. So that means we have to use the reciprocal bearing. Remember that the top bearing is the bearing from the waypoint to our vessel which is not what our GPS is telling us. This is where it gets a bit fiddly because we have to line up 2.5 nautical miles on a bearing of 138 degrees true. That's it there. So I can click. That's our position and if we look down at the bottom left hand corner of the screen we can read that off or mark it in the logbook as required. As you can see from the tutorial the RYE chart plotter has many many more functions than those that we've looked at here. What is important is that when you're on a boat looking at a chart plotter that you're aware of how it works, you know what information it's telling you. So it's worthwhile speaking to somebody who's familiar with it or taking time to go over the manual. Remember that the chart plotter that you're using will normally be interfaced with GPS, so your ship's position will probably be highlighted on the main display screen.